So in the last lecture, we saw that even for rather un, uh, scary looking environments, you know, let's say that we had uh, slight non-convexities or even extended convex obstacles, uh, the dynamic duo of behaviors, go to goal and avoid obstacle, uh, no longer was enough to negotiate these environments. And we saw that we really needed some way of flowing along the boundary of an obstacle in order to be able to get around in the world. And today, I want to talk about this missing piece, the missing behavior, which is a wall following behavior. And uh, what I want to do now is really just introduce it and then in the next lecture introduce it in a more systematic way as the induced mode uh, when you're trying to avoid sliding or uh, avoid uh, type 1 Zeno. So here's the question, how do you actually follow walls? Or when I say walls, what I really mean are boundaries of uh, boundaries around obstacles. So let's, let's start simple. Here is, as always, an obstacle and I have a disk around it where this is my safety disk. Well, avoid obstacle is going to tell me, you know what, I want to move straight away from this, uh, from this uh, obstacle. Well, how do I, which direction do I go in in order to maintain a constant distance from this obstacle? Well, what I need to do is I need to flow right, along the boundary of this, uh, this region. Well, what this means is that here I need to go in this direction. And what I really need to do then is take the direction given to me by my avoid obstacle behavior and flip it down like this. And this is a negative pi over 2 or uh, a negative 90 degree flip. So that's what I need to do. I need to flip it down by 90 degrees like this. And now I'm going to call this FW for follow wall. And follow wall is now simply, like I said, a flip down of 90 degrees, which this curious looking matrix here is actually achieving. And I may want to scale it. So I may have some scaling that's making this longer or shorter, depending on, I don't know, whatever concerns you may have. Now I should point out that this matrix here I can write as a rotation matrix that corresponds to a pi over 2, sorry, negative pi over 2 flip. Uh, so I can actually write this as alpha, which is the scale, times the rotation matrix, that is the flip, times u avoid obstacle, because that is ultimately the behavior that I'm, that I'm flipping. So this tells me that the way to move around this obstacle is to simply take my avoid obstacle behavior and flip it. That's as simple as that. So, there is a problem though. I can actually flip in two different directions. Not only can I go like this, I can also go like that. So, one question one should ask, of course, is which direction should I go in? But the other question is, uh, how do I even mathematically describe these two options? Well, what I have, what we saw before, was we call it u follow wall. Now I'm going to call it u clockwise follow wall. And the clockwise follow wall corresponds to a negative pi over 2 flip of avoid obstacle. A counterclockwise follow wall, which means follow it in the other direction, well, that is simply a pi over 2 flip of uh, the avoid obstacle behavior. So if I introduce this thing that I already called the rotation matrix, this is simply an operation that does this flip of a vector. If I have a vector here, v, and I want to flip it by phi, this new thing here is simply r of, it's not phi, it's theta, r of theta times v. This is how I get this new, this new uh, rotated vector. So the rotation matrix is cosine theta minus sine sine cosine. That's the form of this uh, linear operator that's flipping uh, vectors a certain angle. Well, what we've already seen is that the clockwise follow wall, it's a minus pi over 2 flip, so uh, this behavior is simply equal to alpha times this matrix times u avoid obstacle. Now the counterclockwise, well I can write it in the same way, it's just a pi over 2 flip instead of a negative pi over 2 flip, which gives me the following expression. So I actually have very, very clean expressions for how I should make my flip, meaning how I should proceed along the boundary of the obstacle. And this works even if the obstacle is not just a point. 
because all I really did was I took avoid obstacle, the avoid obstacle behavior, and, and flipped it. Now, we don't know which direction to go in, though. So let's say that we have this situation, right? I'm going towards a goal, and then let's say when I'm here, I now want to switch to a follow wall behavior. Which direction to choose? It's not entirely clear, right? I, if the robot only sees what's going on around here, for instance, how does the robot know what the world looks like? We haven't built a map of anything. So you could either go clockwise, which in this case turned out to be the long way around, or you can go counterclockwise. But it's really not clear how we should make this, this choice. But here's one thing one can observe, is that go to goal here wants to move you kind of upwards a little bit. So maybe we can let go to goal make the choice for us. Go to goal wants to drive us a little bit in this direction, not at all in that direction. So that's the idea we have here, that there is no obvious answer. There is not an obvious right choice given what local information the robot has. The robot doesn't know globally what the world looks like. So given that we only know locally what's going on, maybe we can let this go to goal behavior decide which direction we should go in. So let, let's try to make this a little bit more mathematically precise, what it means to let the go-to-goal behavior decide. Here, go-to-goal, well, it was, the angle was wrong here. Go-to-goal wants to go in this direction, right? So here, go-to-goal wants to drive us up, a little bit up. So maybe we should take fall of wall up. So this would be U clockwise. Well, U counterclockwise, or U fall of wall counterclockwise wants to go down, and note, that this angle is less than pi over 2, but this angle, the absolute value of it, is greater than pi over 2. So we should be able to look at this angle to determine where we should go. Well, luckily for us, there's a very simple way of checking these angles. If I have two vectors, v and w, I can take what is called the inner product of those two, which is simply v transpose times w. Well, that's equal to the absolute values of, or the, the length of the vectors, uh, times cosine of this angle in between them. And if this angle is less than pi over 2, then cosine is going to be positive. If it's greater than pi over 2, then cosine is going to be negative. So all we need to do is to look at the sign of this thing to figure out whether or not we're kind of pointing in the right direction. So here is a test. Check, go to goal inner product with follow wall clockwise. If that's positive, we should go clockwise. So in this scenario, again, we're pointing in this direction. Here is the follow wall. So this is go to goal. Here is u clockwise. This angle is less than pi over 2, which means that this situation is satisfied. Here is u counterclockwise. This angle is greater than pi over 2. So that means that the other condition is not satisfied. So what we actually have is a local check. We compute the direction the two different follow wall behaviors would uh, take us in. Then we just take this inner product with the uh, go to goal behavior, and we check the sign. And whoever comes up with a positive sign is the winner. Uh, and that's the direction we choose to go in. Now, there is a problem with this, of course, and that's that if you remember our labyrinth, or a little maze here, right? If I'm following wall, you know what? I'm going to follow it all the way around, and I don't want to keep going indefinitely around and around, right? So then I'm just spiraling. At some point, if here's the goal, I want to release and go towards the goal. So one thing that we don't know yet is when do we actually release the follow wall behavior? When do we stop following walls and start approaching goals again? Uh, the other question is, you know what? We had a void obstacle. We have the rotation matrix that flips either uh, up or down, depending on we're going clockwise or counterclockwise. And then I had this little alpha there. Is there some natural or systematic way in which we can think about alpha? And that is going to be one of the things we will discuss in the next, the next lecture.